What's up everyone? Today I'm going to talk about planning your workouts for optimal growth. So the big question is, how do you get the most out of your workouts? Um, and it starts with planning your workouts. You need to have a schedule or an idea of your routine so you're able to continually allow your muscles to grow and recover in an efficient amount of time. And so I'm gonna run you through my current training plan and this is the plan I'm gonna start next week because uh, with me coming back from Afghanistan, my workouts have been chaotic. Um, I'm sore on days that I try to lift and I'm, it, it doesn't work. So this plan right here, this is what has worked for me in the past and this is what I'm going to set in for my normal routine. That way I can maximize my growth potential and minimize my rest time. So to start your training plan, you need to look at how many days a week are you going to be training. I used to go by, um, I worked out Monday through Friday, and that was my training plan. And then after a few months of that, I switched up. I started Sunday through Tuesday, and Thursday and Friday. So it all depends on how many rest days you want to take, what your schedule is like. And so I'm now into the phase of I like to work out six days a week. I only take one rest day a week. And sometimes I don't even need a rest day, but I have to take it in order for my muscles to uh, recover from the week's training. And so we're going to jump into basically how my weeks are going to look. So I like to start my training on Sunday. Sunday, I'm going to start with deadlift, back and biceps. So of course, um, on Sundays, I'm going to go into the gym and I'm going to warm up and I'm going to start with those deadlifts. That's going to be the main focus of the day. Once I'm done with that, I can move on to some auxiliary back movements and some bicep movements. But those aren't the main muscle group. I mean, the back is, but uh, I'm not focusing on the back and the biceps. I'm mainly focusing on the power lift. So then Monday, I'm going to move into chest and triceps. So that way we're not overlapping anything from Sunday to Monday. Um, so Sunday is going to be mainly a bench press day, but um, I'm also going to do probably two or three other movements for chest, as, along with probably three to four movements for the triceps. Moving into Tuesday, I have shoulders. Now, this is one where it can overlap a little bit. If I have a sore chest, sometimes um, it can affect my shoulder days. However, I would prefer for my chest to affect my shoulder days over my shoulder days affecting my chest days, if that makes any sense. Um, so moving on to Wednesday, Wednesday is leg day. Um, it is a great break day for me to move from my upper body to my lower body and back to my upper body. So um, leg day is going to be Wednesday and there's a reason it's also Wednesday. So if I'm deadlifting Sunday, I want to give my body about two or three days to rest before I hit legs. I would prefer to deadlift with sore legs than I would squat with a sore back. So I give more days to rest um, between deadlift and legs than I do legs and deadlift. I don't really count my off day. So um, after leg day on Wednesday, Tuesday I'm going to go into arms. Arms is mainly going to be biceps and triceps. However, if I'm trying to hit every muscle group twice in a week, I may throw in two shoulder workouts during that, uh, during that day. And then Friday. Friday is going to be the chest and back workout, just a push and pull. Um, and it's going to be my weekender. So um, this is what it looks like right there. Um, I find that this has worked for me in the past. When I was in the desert, uh, this training plan uh, really helped me um, move weight. Um, I was able to increase my bench quite a bit, my deadlift and my squat, my squat most notably. And um, I really found this to optimize my, my training and allow me to rest quicker because once you're on a training program, your body learns to, it knows what's coming. So um, if you hit chest, your chest is going to recover quicker. If you've got a routine, 
your body's going to start recovering faster and you can push it harder and harder. Um, and that's when, once you hit a plateau, I know this is like if you have a training plan that's working and then you're pushing and pushing and then your body just gets used to it and you hit a plateau, that's when you need to rethink your training plan. That's when you need to go back to the drawing board and you need to write up a new plan for what you're going to do. And uh, I'm not saying this training plan is going to be the one for you, but this one works for me and I would recommend trying it out to see if it works. If it doesn't, what do you want to change? Do you need more rest time? Do you not need one day off a week? That's up to you. If you don't like hitting every muscle group twice in a week, that's fine. I used to be in the philosophy of I only need to hit one per week or each muscle group once a week. I would do a chest day, I would do a back day, I would do an arm day, I would do a shoulder and basically that's when my body couldn't handle overload on the muscle. Now that I've been lifting for over two years, uh, my body reacts better to it. And so uh, this is kind of my spiel about training plans. Um, figure out what works best for you, put it down in a calendar and have a way to track it. I use a little black notebook when I'm in the gym so I know what day I did what workout and then I can say okay this was the workout I did all these reps all these sets at this weight and then uh, I can know if like I missed the day if on my off day I'm feeling good I might go hit that day depending on where it falls in the week and that kind of thing so um, really focus on getting a good plan it's your foundation to your workouts um, that way you're using your muscle groups uh, better and you can push yourself further in the gym so now that we're done with this I'm gonna go hit the gym I'm gonna do some arms today so come along with me for that so I was supposed to be going to the gym right now but I had to run by the base exchange um, I had to get a haircut and then I had to pick up some ingredients um, for something I have to make for dinner for tomorrow and then while I was there, Scott called me and asked if I wanted to do taco, tacos tonight. Uh, so I was like, sure, why not? Um, so I'm not going to the gym yet. Uh, we're going to make tacos real quick. I'm going to eat some dinner, hang out with these guys for a little bit. And then once I'm done here, I will go to the gym. So I will see you guys then. All right, I finally made it back on base. It's 11.45. Stayed a little bit later at Tucker's than I thought, but we we're having some fun. Uh, made some tacos that were really good, and then we played some Nintendo 64. So that was a good old throwback. Uh, ooh, fresh haircut, it's really cold around the ears. Uh, okay, so we're gonna hit arms today in the gym, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. So uh, let's get at it. I swear, for every voiceover I've tried to do, I've had to retake it at least once. So this is take two. For this workout, I wanted to hit more repetitions and less weight. So um, I'm going to open up here with a seated incline dumbbell curl. And I did four sets of this at 12 reps at 25 pounds. And it was, it's a really good activation. Uh, workout it's got a good stretch at the bottom and then you can get a really good squeeze at the top to get the blood flowing into your muscles and then um, moving into the next exercise it's actually a superset I'm gonna start here with the barbell preacher curl and I superset this exercise with the dumbbell hammer curl and for the preacher curl I did two sets of 12 at 50 and two sets of 10 at 60 uh, mainly because I wanted to switch the focus on the last two sets more towards the hammer curls. So for the hammer curls, I did two sets of 10 at 20, and then I dropped the weight to increase the reps for the last two sets, and I did 12 at 15. Um, that way I got a little bit more um, hypertrophy action going on, and that way I could um, just do more reps for the hammer curls by dropping the weight because I did increase the weight for the uh, preacher curl. Um, I really like this combination and especially the preacher curls. I'm a big fan of those. Um, whether you're doing them with a dumbbell, an easy bar, or a fixed barbell, um, there's so many varieties. Um, you can just kind of do what you want with it. Um, but I, 
Today, I went with the flat bar um, just to get the really good squeeze um, on the inside of the biceps. So after I was done with the superset, um, I, I moved into a cable, easy bar curl. And here I did four sets. I started at 50 pounds with 12 reps, went to 57 and a half pounds for 10 reps. Then I went to 65 pounds for eight reps. And then I went to 72 and a half pounds and I did five reps there, dropped the weight down to 50 pounds and knocked out four reps. Then I dropped the weight down to 30 pounds and I did five more reps. Um, that was just pretty much to exhaust the rest of my biceps. So after I was done with biceps, I moved into the rope pushdown to warm up the triceps. This is my absolute favorite tricep movement to warm up. Um, here I focused on repetition. So for the first set I did 15 at 42 and a half pounds. For the second set I did 12 at 50 pounds. And for the third set I went back to 42 and a half pounds um, for 15 reps. Moving into the one heavy lift I did for triceps and that's the overhead dumbbell extension. And I did, my rep scheme was 8, 8, 8, 6. And my weight scheme was 10, I'm sorry, 100. 105, 110, and 115. Um, I was actually surprised I was able to do so many reps with such a heavy weight, but this is one area that I've been uh, pushing really hard to get stronger, um, my triceps. After the heavy movement, I went into the last two exercises for triceps. It was another superset, and I started with the easy bar skull crushers. And here I did three sets of 10 reps at 85 pounds. And I supersetted these with uh, dumbbell kickbacks. And I did three sets of dumbbell kickbacks. My first set, I did eight reps at 15 pounds, but I wanted to get more reps in. So I dropped it down to 10 pounds and I did 10 reps for the second and third set of the movement. All done. So it was, uh, it was a good arm workout. I did four bicep movements before I did four tricep movements. Um, I know I've said this in the past, but I like to switch it up between alternating movements and uh, just isolating the muscle groups. So today was just more of like an isolation. So biceps, um, and then there was triceps. So it's a good workout. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed it, as along with the uh, workout planning guide. Um, I tried, try my best. So, give this video a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.